Patriots. This is the Patriot Mobile booth here at America Fest in Phoenix, Arizona. And the amazing thing about this event is that we have incredible people walking the halls, talking to the people. They're not just backstage, they're out here mingling and uh, talking to the real citizens. And I'm a champion of doing that. If you don't know who this woman is, I mean, you've been living under a rock because, <laughs> because Harry Hageman just took the state of Wyoming. She is Congresswoman-elect. And um, as you know, I'm not gonna throw anyone under the bus, but uh, got a person out of there that was long past needed to go. We are so grateful you won. And I would like to take a little different angle. Could you just tell us about yourself, sort of, uh, I, I, I've heard you speak about your legal experience and all that, and a lot of people don't know that. So tell us about your life before Congress. Well, thank you very much for having me today. I am a water and natural resource attorney. I grew up on a ranch outside of Fort Laramie, Wyoming. I'm a fourth generation Wyomingite. My great grandfather came to Wyoming from Texas in 1879 ah. on the cattle trail. So probably I, in August when it was so hot. <laughs> when it was so hot. That's right. Uh, I have been practicing law for over 33 years, and I've been a trial attorney. I've handled some pretty big cases, some lawsuits primarily against the federal government. Uh, most of the work that I've done for the last 20 years has been fighting back against the administrative state, the unlawful and unconstitutional administrative state. So I've taken on the EPA, the USDA, the US Fish and Wildlife Service, the US Forest Service, Corps of Engineers and other agencies challenging uh, unconstitutional takings of private property, uh, the efforts to expand the uh, Clean Water Act to take private property as well. Uh, trying to take control of irrigation facilities. So I've been fighting the federal government for quite some time and trying to force them back into the, the narrow role that they're supposed to have in our lives, but also fighting against the, the unconstitutional administrative state that really has overtaken the role of, of legislating, contrary to our, our constitution and the separation of powers. Well, and the, 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 the private property rights that we hold as Americans are the foundation of our freedom. Absolutely. And that is people do not realize how much that aspect alone is under attack. So very few people going into Congress have the wealth of experience and wealth of knowledge that you have. It is so impressive. Well, I often say if you can't own property, you are property. And some of the, the lawsuits that I've handled, it's very clear to me that especially with the EPA, that what they're trying to do is use the Clean Water Act and the definition of a navigable water of the United States to take over irrigation infrastructure and our farms and ranches in the Western United States. I handled one lawsuit where they declared an irrigation ditch being a navigable water of the United States and uh, brought a lawsuit against my client at one point, he was facing penalties of 60, almost $65 million for cleaning out an irrigation ditch on his property. We won. It took us six years and a two-week trial, and we won. But that's the kind of stuff I was fighting back as, a, as just a regular attorney. In Congress, I want to fight the administrative state. That is so powerful and so needed, and um, so few people can afford to hire attorneys, and the big bully of the government thinks that they can just come in and take and take and take, and you can't give them an inch because it then turns into a foot and a mile. Yes, it does. So having someone that understands and has been fighting for private property rights is so critical to our free America. That is so, so important. Now, what are your priorities um, when you um, head up to the swamp in January? <laughs> Well, I will be sworn in on January 3rd, and I can't wait to get started. My priorities are forcing Congress to retake its authority of being the legislative branch. Our forefathers recognized many years ago that you should not concentrate power in one branch of government. We don't have a monarchy. We don't have a king. We don't have a queen. We have three separate but co-equal branches of government. And over the last 30 years especially, Congress has really abdicated its responsibility for lawmaking. And I want to change that paradigm. I want to limit the power and the reach of the administrative agencies that they are solely responsible for carrying out the law as written by Congress, not making their own law. And so an example is the, you know, the USDA recently came out with a guidance document that either schools adopt radical gender ideology as pushed by the Biden administration. Stop a second. Let's stand up and... I just heard that in the background.
Okay, I'll ask you that again. Sorry, it caught me. I'm like, oh my gosh, that's happening. <laughs> so we're going to go back and uh, just quickly talk about the importance of private property to America's freedoms and why it's so important to have a lawyer that understands private property law and understands what the federal government's trying to do. So yes. tell us about your role when you get to the swamp. Well, when I'm sworn in in January, and I'm very much looking forward to getting to work. Uh, the, the, the election was November 8th, and that almost seems like a lifetime ago. So I'm excited to get back to Washington, D.C., and my agenda is really going to focus on limiting the power and reach of the administrative agencies. Uh, Congress long ago abdicated its responsibility for lawmaking, and we need to get back into that role. The, our forefathers created three separate branches of government for a reason. We are not a monarchy. The president and the executive branch should not have the power that they've been exercising. We are a constitutional republic, not a democracy. We are a constitutional republic. We have a representative form of government, and our representatives are failing us by allowing these executive agencies, whether it's the Department of Education or Transportation, to take over the power and authority that they have. So my primary goal and my agenda over the next two years and hopefully thereafter will be focusing specifically on limiting the power and reach of the executive branch and forcing Congress to legislate. Amazing. Now, would you, would you mind looking into the camera and t telling them what you told me about who built this country and who's trying to take it down? Well, the way that I, the, the, the old uh, adage is that it was men in overalls who built this country and its men in suits are destroying it. And I think that that's an interesting way of looking at it. It was the people who, uh, the farmers and the truck drivers and the coal miners and the oil field workers, those are the people who have created the prosperity in this country. And we are, this administration especially, the Biden administration, is not only disparaging them, but attempting to destroy their very way of life. And in doing that, they're going to turn us into a third world country. Our prosperity is based upon affordable food, energy, and housing. And this administration has done everything that it can to destroy all three. It is a tragedy beyond all tragedies. We have an administration that has become an enemy of the people. I want to fight back against that because I know who is important in this country. I know who are the people who actually produce. I've represented them and worked for them for years, grew up on a ranch. I want to make sure that their voices are heard. Can we love her anymore? <laughs> you are amazing. Thank you, you are. Thank you so much for giving us this time today. Thank you. And we're so happy. You are made for such a time as this. Thank we're going to keep you in our prayers. And you stand for the same things that Patriot Mobile stands for. And we're, yes. we're pleased to be fighting along with you. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank and, you. And men, I'm going to add men and women in suits is who's going to save our country. <laughs> God bless right. you. Thank you. Thank you Thank so you. much. Thank you.